Welcome back to the FitPro Podcast. Before we get into today's episode, just a few words, guys. Make sure you are subscribed on iTunes and on Android so that you can stay up to date with Season 2 of the FitPro Podcast. This is Episode 3. Uh, if you're on iTunes, make sure you leave us a review so that I know what I can make better or what I'm doing well. If you haven't for a while, make sure you visit FitProPodcast.com to get all of the episodes you can listen go through the archive there is obviously hundreds of episodes um last last but not least we have our facebook page make sure you leave us a big thumbs up if you love the show comments if you like the show and uh, let us know again what we can improve so that we can get better that being said let's head into episode three you will enjoy it and i will talk to you at the end <music> Welcome back to the Fit Pro Podcast. I'm your host, Marvin Fayez, and today we have a special guest. His name is Martin McDonald. He has a nutrition consultancy business. He's had it since 2008. It's called Mac Nutrition. Head to macnutrition.com. They provide nutrition services to athletes, corporations, and the general population. Last year, they released the 12 month course called Mac Nutrition Uni, which has absolutely exploded globally. Martin, take a second, let us know who you are personally, and then we'll get into the show. Mm, hi, Marvin. Thanks for having me. That's no problem. Um, so, yeah, I mean, how far do you want me to go back? Well, all the way? <laughs> probably not all the way. Let's, let's give it a, a about a five to ten minute summary, and then we'll get into the show. Sure. So... Yeah, I, I started um, in the industry as a um, very kind of, I suppose, academic point of view. So I went to university and did a, a three-year degree in sport and exercise science. And that's quite in, in the UK, it's a very broad topic. So you do the physiology, the biomechanics, the nutrition, but you also do psychology, sociology. So it was really, um, you know, a bit of everything. And um, I was actually... At the time, I started competing in natural bodybuilding just before I turned 18. And that kind of, I did that for five years competitively. And that really sparked my love for nutrition and uh, and training alongside that as well. And so I ended up going and doing a master's in uh, sports nutrition and kind of specializing in the area. And as well, I ended up doing a postgraduate in clinical nutrition as well because of the types of populations I ended up working with in, you know, as you said, the general population and corporate nutrition business people with some health issues who also needed weight loss. So that's where I started. And I, I really enjoy the education side of things. And so I was lecturing undergraduates. Uh, initially as well as doing my consultancy work for various athletes and um, teams and yeah I didn't really like the red tape of university life and, and kind of tick box stuff and teaching stuff I didn't necessarily agree with at times or um, the assessment methods so uh, whilst it was nice that I had a, a guaranteed audience every week because I love public speaking it was um it just became kind of the the paperwork was just pushed me out of it so I ended up you know launching my consultancy full-time and I got really lucky early in my career actually worked with a a soap soap opera star tv person and she said my name on kind of breakfast television here in the UK and um, yeah, my, my phone just basically ran, rang off the hook for three months solid. And um, yeah, that, that kind of allowed me to, to start taking on staff. And I've always been, I've always liked the idea of kind of bringing other practitioners on. And so, um, you know, for the, for the most part, everyone who's been uh, with me over the years has, has stayed and we're, we're kind of growing into a, a nicely sized business. And, and that kind of takes, you know, that was going on until whatever that was, eight years. And, and then in at the end of 2015, basically, we had been running personal trainer education courses, but just short courses trying to help people to do everything from learning about 
the nutrition stuff and how to get really great results with people but also on top of that little things that I'd learned along the way in terms of mistakes that I'd made and little things that I'd done that actually turned out to be amazing in terms of like search engine optimization stuff just you know I'm I like doing everything within the business I, you know um little known fact I, I once wanted to be an accountant and um I'm also a little bit of a computer geek if I allow myself to, to do that but I um I mean computer geek as in like computer games not actually very technically minded but anyway so I like all those things and we we ended up having a, a really great kind of Google ranking and so we've just ended up kind of telling people these things and the feedback was look why don't you do a longer qualification why don't you do something that is going to qualify us to to practice and do these things so yeah that ended up launching last year and um it's it, it's just been mind blowing really we i think it's one of those things i i had um a few people who kind of i won't mention their names but quite well known i suppose online trainers sort of saying to me you know what was the what was the secret what was the thing that you think caused it and it's so hard to put your finger on it but i think over the years generating the trust of people who follow me and being a little bit um someone described me in a an article online as as marmite so um <laughs> they've got this big advertising thing you know you either love it or you hate it yeah, so I think the small following that I have they they're very loyal and they they like what I'm about so we launched this course and had you know big big name people you know Alan Aragon Spencer Nadolski James Krieger all these individuals saying that this is legit if you want to go and learn about nutrition do this course and um it, we we were aiming amazingly for 50 people in our first intake and we were aiming at the UK because I think the only other options out there, you know, there's probably only one other option and it's all in you know Americanized, you know, cups and ounces. So we we were like, okay, we're going to do metric system and grams and teach about calories and macros rather than portion sizes, just just everything. And um we ended up with a, you know, 150 people signing up and wow. last I checked 6 six months ago we've got students in 30 countries and it's just um honestly i cannot i could never have predicted that it would happen and it just shows you the power of social media and the online arena i guess you know that that's amazing man i mean uh, it obviously exceeded your expectations and one thing you did mention was generating trust in the marketplace how did you go about doing that initially yeah so i suppose um it happened over time because i within my personality i suppose i'm people it's funny i get called a troll online and um <laughs> yeah and it's and i i think a lot of people in my first ever member of staff when she came sarah she she had spoken to some quite academic individuals in the uk like oh do you think i should take this job with a uh, mat nutrition and um just asked around of people's opinion she she had a her she had done an internship at a university up north and um had said to her supervisor you know do you think this would be a good opportunity to go for and um the the feedback she got was basically like be, you will learn loads but it will be scary and it will be really tough because he's a hard person and um she literally came and when she started it took about 6 weeks to um realized she was petrified of me she thought and she <laughs> she ended up saying to me i thought she said you were so nice that um i thought you were just faking it and i thought behind the scenes you were like judging me and um all these kind of things and i was like no this is genuinely what i'm like um and it was so funny the kind of realization she was like yeah i would go home every night and everything you had asked me i would go and read about it and in the mornings i wouldn't be able to sleep i'd wake up and i was like oh my goodness the, this is the view of <laughs> yeah this is the view of people outside of my real life because online i was this person who would call people out and like no one was safe but i think back then this is you know as i say it's going back a few years but i was a little bit more um open to doing it and 
you know, I had spare time. So I was on social media and I'd see someone saying something stupid and I would go, no, that's wrong. And and it didn't matter who they were. And I think that was, you know, in the UK, I was calling out kind of national governing bodies and the um, kind of dietetics associations and these kind of things. And it, it was never, you know, one thing that I sort of pride myself on is it was never personal and I would never end up swearing or name calling. It was just, this is what the data says. And I, I think it's ridiculous that you don't know the answer but I think as soon as you were use a word like ridiculous they're like get their backs up and you know it's just I, I suppose I did like to, to be correct and I suppose at times I wound people up a bit more than I should have but anyway going back to your question about trust I think I was just very black and white so people could say look if they can get on board with factual information you know I'm the person who they're they're happy to go with and it was just over a period of many many years I think sometimes people think they can you know oh, I've got a new idea I'm going to launch a business you know I'm going to build some trust for six weeks and it's like when have you ever been able you know in real life yeah at what point would you trust someone enough to hand over two thousand pounds or you know three thousand dollars it's um it's not going to take six weeks so I think um it was just being um, consistent in a in a certain message and my message has always been this kind of evidence-based approach and wanting to um, you know do right by people and and kind of treating the client well before thinking about you know whatever it is profit margins or or you know the the kind of sales the point in your sales funnel that they're at and these kind of things it was you know what does you know really hardcore on the the nutrition and the making a difference in the efficacy of your messages so I think it was just people could understand what I was about and therefore if they could get on board with that you know some people it's like oh he's he's got a big name but I'm not really sure what his views are or what he what he's about and it's like it was very black and white so yeah I think I probably pushed a lot of people away Mm -hmm. through they don't they just want someone to be nicey nicey all the time yeah and uh, I do get that because I think if someone is a bit ignorant to the some of the kind of crappy stuff that goes on in our industry, they they can be happier. Like if you think the world is all roses, then you'll just live a really happy, ignorant life. But it, it's it's unfortunate. It's a bit like the Matrix, like blue pill or the red pill. Yeah. Um, you know, if you take that pill, you're going to have your eyes open and things become a bit crap. But at least you can see the truth. So... Um, yeah I think it was just that over a period of time they just they knew what they were getting and as well it as much as as much as I don't like marketing it it bodes so well to have other people who have a lot of trust from these people already going you know what that course is legit you're gonna get what you pay for it's gonna be great so there was lots of different levels to it in terms of um What's that thing that people say about like be like a magnet, like attract the people that you want to, but repel the others so that those you attract are really um, what you want. And I think it was just all those levels of um, of building that trust just really, they just all came together. And one final thing is just what we created didn't exist already. And um, I'd never thought about that. I was never intelligent enough to go, or business mind enough to go you know what's a gap in the market but realistically i can't believe someone didn't do it sooner to be totally honest <laughs> yeah and i mean you can see them and uh, uh you go why isn't somebody taking advantage of that gap why is it why why is there nothing there all right i'll do it and the biggest thing is that people have ideas and there's people that have ideas that put it into action and people that just have ideas um mm. so depends which one you are i mean plenty of people have those ideas but no not many people go out and make it happen now I get this. I, I get this question a lot from a lot of the the listeners. Um, they want a blueprint. They want uh, the. They want stuff handed to them. So the easiest way I figured to ha- like hand things to people is ask the guests like yourself. What mm. I mean when when it comes to generating trust in the marketplace. I know we're going over this again, but where do you start? Where does someone go? Like say. They're starting from zero. They don't have much experience, but they've done their qualifications. Um, 
for example, it's a personal trainer or whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, they've done their qualifications. How does one then become an expert in a field enough for people to start listening to them? Yeah, that's a brilliant question. So, um, I think if in using your scenario because it's a helpful one, let's say you've just qualified and it's you know you need to get clients through the doors, and so you've got you can do some kind of hard sell, but it's it's tiring and it 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 runs out and it's kind of um, it's I've heard someone kind of give it the analogy of it's like just walking around a bar offering to buy buy the opposite sex a drink and seeing who'll take it up <laughs> rather than any other of the methods you could use. And um, I think the other methods in the in the fitness industry are you need to position yourself as an authority. And I think when people people hear the word authority, they look to the people at the top of the chain as opposed to what does your target market see as a person with authority. And it's totally different. You don't need to be writing super, super high level articles. You don't need to be even aspiring to be on podcasts because how many of the members of the gym that you're working at listen to, you know, decent podcasts? They don't. They read kind of crappy magazines. They, you know, read the flyers up in the gym. They listen to their friends. So you need to be an expert in your own um, I've said this a number of times, owning your own postcode. And I think that is a huge one. Before you start trying to take over the online world, it's so, so, we're, we're skeptical, I think, as human beings a bit these days. And you need to, you know, what's the easiest way to build that kind of no like trust mentality? And it's, you know, if you know people in your local postcode, then you've already broken that level down. If they, you know, happen to like you, your own network, the your friends and family, you know, it, it you're using them. They probably already trust you. So you can build a level of um, kind of evangelists for your services. So starting small, but getting some real believers, as it were, real kind of followers who, when you post something on your Facebook page, when you tweet something, they will go and just like it. Like, I can't remember. I think it was maybe, it was one of the big names in the industry. And he he liked my post and then commented on it and said, I didn't even read that, but I just liked it because it's you. And I was like, <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's a compliment or not. I'd taken a long time to write this really intelligent, thoughtful, reflective post. And he just told me he hadn't bothered to read it. And um, <laughs> it... Uh, but it is one of those things it's like oh they see your instagram post even where you've put lots of information like i don't think people read really read stuff on instagram it's just all about like it's wearing as few clothes as you can or you know like making <laughs> it. but um you know they will just like it and then other people see your post and go oh do you know what that's got a hundred likes that's it it must be of value you know even though it's you know that likes don't equal value but it's if you start small if you get real you know and then on top of this it should go without saying and i hope it does but you need to get results this is a big thing of why we're trying to educate people on the nutrition side is because working you know as a personal trainer or nutritionist or anything if you can only get results with a certain type of clientele like the hyper adherent clientele if you're not attracting basically bodybuilder types and you're attracting local gym users you know like 30 40 50 year old men and women with children and jobs and they're not hyper adherent and they won't track every macro or calorie that they you tell them to then you don't get results with them so how on earth are you going to build that trust in in your local or, or or further afield marketplace so you know you do need to be good at your job that goes without saying and you do need to get great results and i think some people even are get going away from using testimonials and i just think that's silly i think some people are like oh yeah don't use before and afters because anyone can get results in 12 weeks and anyone you know it's the after after that matters yeah and it's like you're just shooting yourself in your foot like 
use the before and afters, but still offer a great service so that the after after looks great. Like be different, start offering a before after and after after photo if you really want to, but don't take all the testimonials down off your website because someone you dislike and you think doesn't have integrity is paying for testimonials off fiverr.com it's you know it, it's just crazy you've got to play the game to some extent and it, you don't lack integrity by doing so so um i think yeah going back to like the blueprint of it's start small get some real quality no like trust with people through positioning yourself as an expert through getting great results and i i've even given this advice out recently is put on you know write some articles but again articles that are going to be useful for the type of clientele you're going for don't try and i see some personal trainers trying to educate other personal trainers and i'm like who's your target market they're like oh 20 to 40 year old females who you know it's like why are you writing stuff on um nutrient partitioning when they don't even know what a carbohydrate is so you know do write the articles that they want and at the same time even if your clients aren't reading your articles the fact that you've had the confidence to do so immediately says authority oh yeah. They've written 10 articles on this. They must be an authority. It's like, nope, anyone can write one. Anyone can build a website. Um, but some of the population are still a bit oblivious to the fact that anyone can have a website. Anyone can do this. Anyone can do that. Um, so write those articles and get them out there. Get you know, Build that trust so that your articles get a little bit of interaction at least. Um, and then the final one was just potentially put on a presentation. You know, Even if it's a non-fee event just by having being someone who can stand and talk in front of a group of people and at the same time if you're petrified of talking in front of people don't take this advice <laughs> but um you know may or maybe do and get better at it i don't know but at least if you can stand up and talk for a little amount of time about a subject and then the biggest thing out of that funnily enough is not who's there and who listens it's take some photos of you in front of people talking teaching them about nutrition and and straight away it's just more and more caveats of oh this person is legit they they know what they're talking about people are coming to listen to them and if no one turns up to your presentation you need to go back three steps to get results with some people um and and just be genuinely good at your job and and you know maybe going you know your scenario just qualified maybe you need to offer a few free sessions to to show people that you're good at what you do um and if you're not good at what you do maybe you need to go back even one more step further and more education is is what you need a more practical education so um yeah i think with all of those facets there's a few you know if i'd summarize more uh, succinctly there's like three facets there if someone implements those they're going to um they're going to build some trust in the marketplace 100 percent. and i mean i think people also need to relax a little bit and go it doesn't it doesn't happen overnight you're not going to become an authority yeah. overnight uh everybody <laughs> everybody wants to uh get that piece of paper and then automatically be the guru or the guy that everybody yeah. wants to go to that stuff yeah. has to be built. Like you said, that trust has to be built. And yeah. you, you, you made some amazing points. I mean, especially with like the articles. I think people do not realize how easy it is to get on a lot of these magazines um, and how easy it is to write an article and how easy it is for people to perceive you as an expert because you've written a few things. Or, for example, the pod this podcast, I've done 107 episodes. <laughs> Some people would say, uh -huh. I've done a few episodes and I I I'm an expert at podcasting. It, it just, yeah. it it's perception is reality at the end of the day. But yeah ultimately obviously you've got to work on yourself and you've got to grow personally in order to then become that actual authority now uh martin when it comes to your nutrition so you've obviously taken the outlook of you're gonna attack nutrition okay out, out of everything or do you do a full like when when it comes to your course do you all talk about everything or do you just focus in on nutrition and be the best at nutrition yeah so our our course particularly we the, the kind of 52-week curriculum is 
um, 100% nutrition focused with with any underpinning stuff they need to know. So there's a there's a bit of biochemistry at the beginning. We do actually teach a little bit of research methods. Our second intake, they had their research methods um, lecture last week, and it's always one that throws up some. Um, you know, even at university when I studied it, like we've stripped it right, right, right back. The point of us including research methods because. As I've said, we we've been really careful to teach people what they need to know to get great results with clients. So we've taken out loads of um, kind of bump when you do a, a textbook course, and they're like, "Oh, here, learn about the electron transport chain and the Krebs cycle." And it's like, when have you ever needed to to <laughs> really name like um, glucose six phosphate to get results with? you know a client who just doesn't eat very well and doesn't exercise you don't need to know it so we've stripped back lots of that stuff but we have kept some information in there like the research methods so that they can continue their learning so you know in 52 weeks i genuinely believe we've even put in our marketing the last nutrition course you'll ever have to do because you know some people on our course have done like four nutrition you know like courses qualifications certifications beforehand and just said you know what i just leave them feeling like I don't know how to implement this information. And then we've got people kind of six months in saying, it's, I'm game ch- this has been a game changer for me. Like I'm getting results with clients that I never would have before and it's completely changed my outlook because f- I think for once we're practitioners teaching people to practice as opposed to like academics teaching people theory or kind of a personal trainer t- trying to teach another personal trainer to be an expert nutritionist. It just doesn't really work. Like we are this is kind of one of our boasting points but every single one of my staff is qualified to master's level um or higher and then they are by and by like masters in nutrition and they are practitioners they've got you know hundreds of hours of experience of working with a wide variety of the population and so we're trying to teach people what we've done and you know one size doesn't fit fit all but at the same time evidence-based people say that oh you know one size doesn't fit all and like yesterday i saw a post from a not in a mean way but a supposed evidence-based person and he essentially said you know you can do any of these fads but it always comes back to don't lose weight quickly only lose half a pound to a pound a week and um the day before that i was on a podcast telling people about the research that shows you can lose weight really quickly and it has all of these magical things that people say happen like oh it wrecks your metabolism and oh it guarantees weight regain and xyz they're not evidence-based we just have this bias as people who want to help people against quick fixes because quick fixes are crap but losing weight quickly with adequate coaching adequate nutritional counseling you know adequate accountability adequate education on what really matters it's not the fact that you're cleansing your cells it's the fact that you're in a calorie deficit is why you're losing weight you give your client all of those things you can make them lose weight really freaking quick if they can adhere to it and it doesn't cause all these negative things like if they want to intermittent fast absolutely brilliant if that's right for them but so we all say you know one size doesn't fit all but then kind of forget to actually put that into practice so we we do focus on the nutrition we don't do any training stuff that's worth pointing out we've you know i i love training myself um as i said i competed in natural bodybuilding for many years and i don't compete anymore because um essentially i don't like being hungry but um (laughs) (laughs) if you can handle being hungry it's a sport for you but not for me anymore so um i you know i really like the training side but at the same time being a specialist in something it's really hard to be in my position i suppose as an educator to know lots and lots and lots about new training and lots and lots about nutrition kind of a broad area of nutrition if you're just a bodybuilding person and you know all the stuff about bodybuilding training and all the stuff about bodybuilding nutrition then great but our course covers kind of sporting populations clinical populations weight loss muscle gain like the whole spectrum of nutrition because people who come to us are wanting to qualify as nutritionists to be able to you know set up a clinic or set up an online nutrition um support service or any of these things so yeah we've heavily focused on the supporting knowledge so again 
we do have a module on like behavior change, um, the kind of consultation process, communication stuff. So it's not strictly nutritional science, but it's stuff you need to know to get results with with clients. Um, but you know, by providing nutrition services. Perfect, man. I mean, I you mentioned. Um Intermittent fasting, and I I live and breathe intermittent fasting. I love it. I did I did uh, uh, what's it the sixteen and eight myself personally, yeah, yeah. Uh, and th- it's the best I've ever felt doing that. And mm. when I was actively uh, when I was actively a personal trainer, I tried everything uh, purely mm. because I wanted to see what it was like from the other uh, yeah, other side. Yeah. So I tried being a vegetarian. I tried vegan. I tried uh, mm. a ketogenic diet. I tried uh, basically. Uh, intermittent fasting but I got results doing all of those uh, I got mm. results doing all of them and I think people like to again go one size fits all and I find if you find that one person that says the only way you can lose weight is if you're on a low carb diet uh, run the other way <laughs> like yeah. run the yeah. other way and and hit him on the way out because <laughs> it's such a backwards way of thinking but what i've learned over the years of me doing this is that there are no new fundamentals is that correct mm, yeah is that a that, correct that, statement or has that changed that, that is no definitely that i'm sure that will almost always be true mm-hmm. um and it, it's just we try and teach people about this as you've said they're fundamentals or principles of achieving said outcome and um yeah the the idea like intermittent fasting i think some people get a little bit upset like oh it's not new you know i've been skipping breakfast for years and you know <laughs> if you bring it down to it it's kind of like yeah that sort of is 68 yeah. but um it's uh it's still adhering to a principle that you you know you you said you felt great on it and it's and and i'm the same but it's having that understanding that intermittent fasting is a method that isn't a fad it's a tool that you can have in your box to go you know this client says they wake up not hungry do i really need to be telling them that breakfast is the most important meal of the day or what are the principles i'm trying to adhere to oh okay i want them to hit whatever protein a day and i want them to hit these calories per day and actually giving it that name like you don't even have to give it that name if it makes you feel uncomfortable but but creating that infrastructure for their um nutritional lifestyle as it were you you can use that method but the principles of weight loss of muscle gain you know as you said the fundamentals aren't changing in a hurry and um it you know we might get some new discoveries that change our thinking a little bit but nothing is going to change the I know, I know people still debating it and it's a bit madness but like energy balance um people trying to find loopholes in it through the whole ketogenic thing but um you know they they will hold true and and you're exactly right if someone comes and tries to sell you the the answer it's um for anything i think even for business it's um you know for oh, okay you can end up being a um you know like one like a blueprint to use that word again if someone's like oh here's the blueprint to making being successful then then again run run the other way because i even said it when i was answering about like presentation like do a presentation and then i said actually (laughs) if you're not great at presentations maybe don't so it's you know for me i pretty much built my my business up on being slightly controversial and and giving presentations i just i absolutely love presenting and generally can get a group of individuals who don't care you know you turn up to a business and and 30 of the senior management from this huge multinational company have been forced to come and sit and listen to a you know workplace wellness talk with some joker they've never heard of um and i rock up and it's like I can turn that room from being a room of oh man like what a waste of our time I need to go back and um start doing some real work to the to the end point of oh you know what this is really interesting like I've learned some stuff some you know an engaging presenter and um so for me it's an absolutely massive part of what I do whereas for someone else they might need to do things completely differently so you know one size fits all I I always say when I'm giving any kind of mentoring advice is I can only really 
I'm not an expert in business. It's not like I've spent my whole career being a genius businessman or or anything like that. I, I've mastered a trade and I have a slightly entrepreneurial um, kind of trend to what I do. So I've ended up being, or maybe not even entrepreneurial. I, I know some people argue what an entrepreneur really is, but I suppose more of just like, yeah, creating a, a business with employees and something sustainable. So yeah, one size fits all in anything is just that uh, you can kind of smell a bit of a a con, as it were. Yes, and I to- totally agree with that, man. And when it comes to what you do, what why do you do it? At the end of the day, why do you do it? Why do you have Mac Nutrition? Why do you uh, have the Mac Nutrition University course? Why? Yeah. Um, wow. So. <laughs> <laughs> getting deep yeah i think for me it, there's probably a couple of facets that have made that you know that answer your why question i the same as a lot of people in the industry i do get that real nice kick out of helping people whatever that ends up um being that kind of helping thing so at the minute i I'm loving helping people be more successful in their career, in their business, as opposed to helping individuals one-on-one. Like I used to love um, helping individuals one-on-one, but I did find it very stressful. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, you said you've been a, a trainer yourself. There's those times where you kind of lose sleep over, you know, you might be helping 20 clients, but two of them aren't getting the results that you want for them. And you lose sleep over those two rather than the 18 that you're changing their lives. And um, I just found I I took on too much um, of other people's problems and it ended up kind of really upsetting, uh, well, upsetting me and kind of reducing how much I loved doing what I did. So that was when it was really helpful having staff and I could then help my staff help people and get their gratification through that. But on top of that, I, you know, when when we do job interviews, we actually ask people what um, what's your your driver, and um, you know, different people have different things. And for me, one massive <coughs> driver for me has been, and it's you know, it's part of different people's personalities. And I'm happy to admit that I do like being the centre of attention. And I think <laughs> partly that's probably why I like um, presenting because it's like, oh, look, all eyes on me and. Um, you know, you go to a dinner party and you start a conversation and I want people to listen to my story. That's just a, a kind of a trait of me. So the uh, something that I really value is people, I suppose, respecting me, respecting my opinion. And um, I know I'll always do right by them. But it's, you know, I, I suppose. So another thing when you said, you know, why does my nutrition uni exist? It's because I suppose at the same time, I've I spent so many years kind of grafting to get my knowledge to where it is now and um you know having an understanding and i feel like i have built up a level of expertise and i would like to be able to help more people and get more of um the things i've learned and you know i do have that that small level of um self-confidence that i'm like i I do think they'd be best learning it from what we've created than anywhere else. And I'm not a salesman, but I I very much can feel myself becoming a salesman about MNU because uh, I will always say what the best thing is. And for whatever reason, we've ended up having the best nutrition qualification out there because of all the work we've put into it, the the time and effort, the, the student support that we give. And I think first and foremost, we weren't, business focus we weren't money focus we wanted to create the absolute best thing that ever existed and um you know what's followed with regards to business success has been just a a product of that so kind of going back to the why do you do it you know i do it because i want to help people i do it because i like people to value my opinion and so it's it's a bit of a platform for even on an individual basis it's i want someone to go oh how can i um do this what's your you know i think 
that whole problem solver thing like i like someone to ask my opinion so i can think about what what fits into the puzzle of helping them in in whatever scenario you know in just throughout life um you know even i've just uh had my second child he's now seven months and the kind of problem solving of children like i i get a real buzz out of it of like oh he's, he's fit, do, acting this way you know he's doing this he's showing these signs it's like a little bit of a puzzle i suppose um <laughs> so it just kind of it's that intellectually stimulating factor and just finally one thing like why nutrition it's it's kind of difficult to know but as long as i can remember my whole life i've I've been obsessed by human physiology. So when I was absolutely tiny, like I had a a brother who was a lot, a lot, lot older than me. And I was obsessed by his muscles. Like it sounds so weird to say, but I was, I was just genuinely obsessed by kind of the, the physiology of the workings of the body and these kind of things. And I got my first weight set at, at 12 years old and was interested in the training side of that. And I was telling my parents how they should be eating. And it, I cringe now you know, I was like, oh, we shouldn't be having any salt and this kind of stuff. It pretty much parroting the government guidelines, which I now am questioning myself. And I was like, <laughs> think about back to me telling my parents what they should be doing. And they were just these old school, like we just eat real food and whatever. Um, <laughs> and I was like, no, we shouldn't be having butter and salt. But um, yeah, so I suppose that's that's the why. There's just lots of different facets that kind of, I hear people talking about like filling your tank like there's certain things that drain your tank and for me that was taking on other people's problems and those kind of things but the things that fill my tank are you know helping people having my opinion respected and um, just anything to do with nutrition I just or nutrition and human physiology I'm just absolutely fascinated by it I mean I know nothing about politics I know nothing about geography I'm so like I wouldn't know where Perth is. Um, but I know I, I know the country, but I don't know where in Australia it is. Um, but yeah, just nutrition and human physiology just yeah fascinates me. So that's why I do it. It's perfect, man. I mean, you've been able to turn what you're genuinely interested in into basically what you do for a living. So that's great to hear. Mm. But what do you say to the people? that are against courses because i know that there is there are people out there that um go no you should be able to learn everything uh you need to learn to be successful by yourself you shouldn't have to pay for it Mm. um wow i'm i'm not sure i've ever come across them but that's um that's cool to know they exist i'd i'd like to speak to them so i suppose i do one of the things about kind of evidence-based practice is that the whole we we know that the n equals one scenario. So the taking your life experiences and applying them to other people doesn't work. It, it is fraught with errors, and even from a um, like if you think about ancestral communities and how they learn, it was like information passed down through generations and generations and people talked and it is kind of, you never had an N equals one scenario. It was the summation of everyone's knowledge, whereas it can be very insular and, and kind of <clears throat> we've, we have got some, I mean, through, through me speaking at a few big expos and again, kind of calling out some individuals, people are changing their tune a lot from, this what the industry that we that we belong to is a little bit or has this history of experiential situations so the biggest guy in the gym the leanest guy in the gym the most you know inverted commas um successful person we listen to them but the problem is is if you copy their one situation it's like well that guy might have incredible genetics that It doesn't matter what he does. And people can succeed in spite of sub-optimal, sub-standard methods. So, yeah, he's absolutely jacked. But it's like he is training in a completely, you know, illogical way. It's just that he's that big and he would be much bigger if he did it this way. And I say to people, you know, we know that a calorie deficit is what's going to make someone leaner but if that person did a calorie deficit while standing on one leg and they were the leanest person because they loved being hungry as i said before um everyone would go oh the best way to do it is eat less and stand on one leg so that's why having, <laughs> having, I love, I love um, that. 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that one again. Um, be a quote, and that's gonna be the headline for this episode. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's proven. So, it's proven that a calorie deficit yeah. and standing on one leg helps you lose the most weight. Is optimal. I'll, I'll have an ebook soon. Just, uh, just <laughs> the one legged so, deficit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yeah, in that scenario, you need like I'm not saying all courses will will do what I'm saying here because there are courses that are run that are purely one man's opinion or one woman's opinion and there's probably no point in doing that because you could have learned it yourself you know or you have to do you know 25 courses and then you can take a little bit you know I do hear people say that actually it's like you know go to a course take the good stuff get rid of the bad stuff and I'm like man I would be gutted if people are doing my course and saying they're getting rid of the bad stuff because we are just teaching people principles, research, how to synthesize knowledge for themselves. We're not trying to give them the 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 answer, the this is the framework, this is the plan, this is the whatever. It's this is how human physiology works. These are the intricacies. These are the things that might change depending on the individual. And you, as the practitioner, will have to use your emotion realize when is the time that's going to sue xyz client so you know what why should people do courses well for a start they should only do evidence-based courses and that's a whole nother um can of worms to go into you know people using the word evidence-based when they they are so far from evidence-based it's unbelievable but um yeah if you can find a truly evidence-based course that is doing things um, and you know that there, there, there are those courses out there then you will catapult yourself forward you could try and learn everything yourself and some people have and they've found their method but they will fail a greater percentage of their clients because they haven't exposed themselves to different um, methodologies and you know maybe they don't understand some principles they will <clears throat> um maybe take longer to get where they need to they might waste more of their time or their clients time or money by recommending x supplement because they saw somewhere about this supplement this person took it whilst adhering to a calorie deficit or whatever or or this one client came along and said i want to gain muscle i'm taking this supplement they trained them and they got really jacked and it's like oh that supplement seemed to be really good and it's like it's nothing to do with that it just so happens that you were training a guy who had incredible genetics so you've you you could get somewhere without doing any courses but you know where you get to is um, a dubious destination and you know will have inefficiency inherent within it so you know i would definitely say by doing decent courses you're going to um you know, as long as the person teaching you is is got your best interests at heart, you're going to end up with more information. And you know, someone who's further along than you will be able to answer some of your questions. Will be able to. They may have experienced situations like we've creating this this thing called the Mac Nutrition Mentoring Lab, which is a it's separate from Mac Nutrition Uni. It's a continuing professional development platform, but it's. For people who maybe are very, very highly qualified, we've got emergency doctors in there. We've got dietitians, MSc nutritionists who they've done a you know really high level, you know thirty thousand pounds worth of debt to get their qualification <laughs> at, from university. They don't really want to do another course, but they understand that learning from other professionals and people further along in their journey is probably going to help them. So, you know, we basically give free access to that for our MNU students, and again, it's just. It's learning from others rather than being very insular and um, only having your own life experiences to draw from. It, you can't possibly like that is one great thing about the internet, right? It's you know you've got podcasts like this that you can learn from people around the world that you've never you could never have got access to. You know when you go way back, you've got um, forums and Facebook groups where yeah you get some uh, a mixed bag, but you you know you also get some real quality stuff so yeah i think i i would i couldn't believe that anyone would 
do better by doing no courses i just i I, I fail to see how that's ever going to benefit you um but i do think there are better and worse courses that you could do yeah and uh, i'm with you there i mean I, d- I don't understand that uh, they they do exist. They are out there. They uh, may may or may not be trolls, but I I, <laughs> I look at it like my dad always told me. He said, uh, "I want you to do, I want you to do better than I did." So I will tell you what I did wrong. So he basically mm-hmm. he, he, like your parents are always looking out for you. They don't want you to repeat mm-hmm. the same mistakes, and they want you to be better off. Now, by doing a course that it, that you've researched properly and that you know has a certain um, a certain reputation you can shortcut your learning curve there's still a learning yeah. curve you still have to learn there's no there's no um, get rich quick or there's no uh, yeah. they will do it for you there, there is that still you still have to learn but the information mm. rather than going to go find it yourself is thrown in your face and there it is this is what you have to learn learn this and then you can move on from here and i'm, I'm all for it so now when it comes to uh yourself personally what have you learned since starting this consultancy business in 2008 oh wow not, not everything because uh, we'd be here forever but of course. yeah <laughs> what have you learned about yourself yeah. and business yeah yeah that's Wow, one thing that I um that I don't know how many of your listeners it will resonate with, but it's I I think a lot of people in in the kind of I want to help people type arena, you it can feel a little bit dirty to talk about money. And um there's a couple of facets to that with you know what I learned was I was very much I did feel almost two things one a little bit awkward or about talking about money or charging people and secondly I never wanted to consider profitability as a key um, I suppose aspect of my decision making and what I've learned is is that's a really really silly way to do things because if you you know ignore it then if you're the best trainer in the world and you have the best information for people and you can really really um affect change in people's lives but you can't live or you can't you have to quit the industry because you can't you know pay your rent or you know do all of these things that you might want to do then you're basically undermining the good that you could do so one major factor for me was was learning to go you know money isn't a dirty subject you have to get paid get, have to get paid to um to, for your knowledge and if you have as we've just talked about invested in a course invested in your learning um you know that that information and knowledge is worth something just like your time is worth something and the second aspect of that is um being able to it's basically a self-worth thing of oh i feel a bit uncomfortable charging people or telling people how much it costs or taking money and it's not a um you know it, it people are like oh, i've got i've got a trouble talking about money or, or taking money off people and i there was a, a podcast recently that um i just saw someone quote i didn't listen to it but essentially the the comment was you know would you be happy to stand at the door and take money from you know, if someone was speaking at one of my events, they're like, yeah, yeah. And so it's like, we don't have a, I think it was Alan, Alwyn Cosgrove or something like that. And it was like, you don't have a problem taking money. You have a, a self-worth issue. Mm-hmm. And um, the, I thought there was, there's two great things out of that, or, or there's one great thing. And one that I'd like to expand on is, yeah, that is a, a thing of like, yeah, you've got a self-worth issue. But secondly is those people turning up to that event knew exactly what they were paying for and they had committed to pay it. So with regards to your services, it's being really, really transparent. You know, I have no qualms with people paying for our certification because they they can see absolutely everything they're going to get from it we don't over promise we essentially under promise and over deliver and i know that so if you can do the same with your services you never have to worry about 
um, pricing again because they will come to you and say, you know, I'm I'm already um, committed to whatever it is you're doing and it's worth it. So those kind of things. So that's one big thing. I think a learning thing for me was not coming from a background of um, profitability and marketing and business initially. And um, it's something that I had to learn quickly because otherwise I just wouldn't have been able to survive. So that's one big thing I learned. Um, and to be honest, that's probably, you know, one of the bi- biggest things I've learned. Um, yeah, with regards to that. And what have I learned about myself? Um, I think one thing I've learned about myself is uh, I um, very recently is I've kind of the, the my definition of success I, I didn't have a definition of success written down or, or firmly in my mind. And um, I thought, you know, uh, when I when I become successful, so good, because I'm more successful or if I moved towards feeling successful compared to yesterday. So I didn't know what steps I needed to take. So therefore, I ended up writing down what my de- definition of success was. And for me... I've basically written this thing down. You know, success for me is leaving is um, leaving a lasting legacy in this world of being able to help people and make the world a better place. So for me, it's like that legacy thing. That's kind of difficult because I think probably I won't be truly successful until I'm dead. But um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, it's only then you know if it's a lasting legacy. But I think I am seeing, you know, that I am benefiting other trainers and other people. And, you know, everyone's definition is going to be different. So, but just by writing it down and defining it, you know, I learned for me that that meant a lot to me. And I do blame it a little bit on having children and being very sleep deprived because work is busy. But I've ended up in tears quite a few times recently because people have said things to me and thanked me for things and made public statuses about me that have literally brought me to tears because they have said stuff they don't you know they have, they have no idea how meaningful those words were but they've brought me to tears because i'm like man like i'm genuinely making a difference so yeah, i think those are two completely non-nutrition related but um two big things i've learned over time perfect that's a perfect answer and i mean the the, the last thing that i want to get out from you is do you have like a golden nugget tip for somebody that's looking at starting a consultancy business it, within the first six months, what should they do? Oh, wow. Cool. Golden nugget. Right. Um, he wasn't yeah. Prepared. He so, wasn't prepared, prepared for this, folks. He wasn't. No. That's um, no, it's a cool question. So I think golden nugget, if they want to start out, would probably be, yeah, I'm going to say this, is don't don't overestimate or don't underestimate the the effectiveness of mapping out a journey to your career in that again it's not something i did and it was so silly not to do it and now i'm i do this mapping out for our next projects and I, I am personally a bit of an ideas person and I need some of my staff to be, they are finishers, completers, and I am an ideas person. <laughs> and um, but, but I never did this and I feel so stupid for not doing it in terms of map out what things need to happen to to get you to where you want to be. So how many clients do you need to have? How many hours do you need to be working with them? What does the average profitability of each client need to be? What, how, what is the service that you are, you know, positioning yourself as an expert to deliver? And how are you going to make the value of that worthwhile? Um, uh, kind of visible to those who are doing it. And, um, how are you going to get in front of those people? So what are your different avenues? So, you know, I don't do kind of like mind maps on walls, but I know some people really benefit from those kind of things, but don't just go into the fitness industry like, oh, okay, I've just got my, you know, level three qualification. I'm going to go into the gym and I'm going to start, you know, do, do this daily. You know, t- they have, there's that whole thing, isn't there? Like, you know, turn up daily, be there daily, be present, you know, 
be around daily talking to people and generating rapport and all that no like trust but behind the scenes um be planning and you know I, i say to people don't make any profit in the first year don't go on holiday and don't plan to go on holiday in the first year don't plan to have an amazing social life in your first year like think about the future plan for the future um do that you know some people say you know you need to be grinding all the time but it's like no there are periods and um times in your life seasons in your life where grinding is going to be necessary and that is one where you may have to spend all of your evenings and if it's your passion then amazing it doesn't you know you will do that but i spent way too much time personally reading more research you know sitting on pubmed reading research when actually what you've been doing is working out hours in a day how much i need to get paid for those hours so that i wasn't stressing out about oh no i don't know if i'm going to be able to keep up this business because i haven't focused on um any avenues of passive income i haven't uh, focused on how am i going to get clients to hear about me you know no like trust me and then how am i going to serve them and keep them going so yeah i think my my, my golden nugget is is like just don't overestimate all of the little um you know even systems is like okay you've just worked out you need 50 clients doing the kind of business that you're doing it's like do you even have a market of 50 people who are listening to you no well then you've just found out something you need to do and then once you've got 50 clients can you actually serve 50 people at a time well if you can't then what systems do you need to be in place like i just think people qualify with so little knowledge of they just know okay this is how you train someone and i can't wait to get on the gym floor or get in a consultation room with someone and they've got no idea that you know there's things like there's systems that exist there's programs that can help you you know organize people better because you're not an employee anymore you're a business Mm -hmm. and uh, you need to focus on that area I'd say that's a great golden nugget, and I think uh, it's all too f- too often forgotten that you need to be doing, doing money making activities. You need to be out there, not not so much grinding, but working smartly, so that this yeah. th- th- this dream that you have of, say, for example, a personal trainer wanting to be a personal trainer, have the flexibility. That flexibility doesn't come as soon as you get your certificate. No. <laughs> it is it is a, a year, a few years down the line once you've developed your base. So, that, look, that's a great golden nugget, and I think we'll leave it there for today, Martin, because I've got right. a few more lined up for tonight, and it's going to be a long <laughs> night. But where can the listeners find you on your social media? Mm. so like i do literally live on my social media at the minute so best place is add me as a friend or follow me on facebook or my profile is completely public and um yeah i'm constantly there i'm on all of the different social medias instagram twitter as at martin nutrition and um the best you know if you want to go and get loads of free information that we put out is going to the website www.mac-nutritionuni.com and and we kind of have a newsletter there it's not we don't send you three five emails a day it's you know once every few weeks and we give out free lectures from the actual course you know i I speak at a few expos and i get those um nicely filmed up and produced for people so even people who don't want to do the qualification it's not just a pure marketing like there's free nutrition information there and i I emailed people on christmas day with a free talk and said do you know what i'm going to be sitting around on boxing day i'm a workaholic if you want to email me back and tell me what you (laughs) thought of that um please do Uh, so um yeah it's uh those are the best places to catch me like social media and that website is you can find me perfect now put links below in the show notes so you don't have to remember that now but you can click on it later uh martin thanks for coming on today man it's been a pleasure my pleasure thanks very much enjoyed it awesome guys i've been doing this for a while and i'm bringing this back from last season but i still don't know how to end these damn podcasts i have no idea (laughs) There's, I need to play a sound or something. I need to press a button. <laughs> but I have no idea. So, Martin, how would you end a podcast? Oh, goodness me. <laughs> um, maybe you need to make up a motivational quote. Like I, I really liked what you said there about, yeah, it's about not necessarily grinding but working smarter. Like maybe you should have that as your, your <laughs> quote. I think that's brilliant. I'll prepare it for the next one. Martin, thanks so yeah. much for coming on, man. Cheers. That was episode three of the FitPro podcast, guys. I really enjoy 
doing season two because it's a lot more time and effort that goes into an episode. We can sort of dig down into the guest stories and it just it's just an easier way from my point of view to do a quality podcast. Now, if you thought this was quality, make sure you subscribed on your Android or on your iPhone, whatever suits you. Make sure you subscribe so that you stay up to date and you can get access to the entire archive of all the episodes we've done so far. And we've got a few more coming up, obviously. Season 2, this is the third episode. Obviously, seven more episodes to go. Let me know what you think. I'm your host, Marvin Fayers, and I'm out.